This is MathGuide.com. My name is Mark Karadimos. Today we're going to take a look at how to divide fractions. All right, so let's start with a problem. Uh, you know, normally you're going to see a problem, and the problem could look like this: nine eighteenths, and we're going to divide it by twenty-one fourths. So let's say we had to divide these two fractions and uh, I want to indicate to you how it is you're supposed to proceed. Um, in order for me to explain why the technique I'm about to show you works, I have to really go into a little bit of an explanation. So uh, you could write the problem like this and say that it's 9 eighteenths and what we're going to do is divide it by 21 fourths. So I'm going to write it as a compound fraction instead, where the division sign in the original problem is just a fraction bar. Okay, now if you do this, it'll make it clear why uh, you could do, use a special technique. All right, well, if I want to cancel this 21 fourths, I have to multiply it by 4 21sts. If you do that, you can see the 21 is going to cancel with the 21, and the 4 is going to cancel with the 4. All right, so that means I've got to multiply the bottom of this fraction by 4 21st. But in order for me to you know, maintain the original value of this original problem, I also have to multiply the numerator by 4 21st. This way I'll maintain balance with the original problem. So you can see that the denominators are going to totally cancel, and this value in the denominator is going to be equal to 1 because everything cancels, which I'm going to show right now. So the 21 cancels. With the 21, oops. So the 21 cancels with the 21, and the 4 cancels with the 4. So all of this stuff in the denominator cancels. So therefore, you could see that the original problem really now changes to this problem. What's changed? It looks like the second fraction just flipped. And instead of it being a division problem, we now have a multiplication problem. So in other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that when you have a division problem, you flip the second fraction, or in other words, take the reciprocal of the second fraction, and now it's a multiplication problem. And now it's just like the other video we have on how to multiply fractions. So now I'm going to use the same steps I did in the other video about how to multiply. Well, how do you multiply? First you could see if there's a reducing uh, possibilities. So for instance, I look at the numerator and denominator and I see are there any common factors. And yes, I see right here I've got uh, a common factor of 3. So I'm going to divide the top by 3. I'm going to divide the bottom by 3. And I'm going to look for other common factors with numerator and denominator. Like I could, I could reduce these two, or you could all also reduce across with this numerator and this denominator. Like I could divide this by 3, and I could divide that by 3. So if I divide the top by 3, I get 1. If I divide this bottom by 3, I get 7. Okay, can I reduce any more? Well, it turns out that this numerator could be divided by 2. This denominator could be divided by 2. So dividing both of those, so you divide that by 2, you get 2. Divide that by 2, you get 3. All right, so now I scan the numerators and denominators to see, are there any common factors? No. There are no more common factors. So what am I left with? I multiply across now. So I multiply 1 times 2. I multiply 3 times 7. And there's the final answer. 2 21sts. Okay, so I'm going to show you another example. I'm just going to erase all this. All right, so let's take a look at our second example. So here's another one. Let's say we've got 18 over 250. And we're going to divide that 
by 12 tenths. So I try to come up with as horrible of a problem as I possibly could. Pretty horrible. All right, so what do we do to solve this problem? Well, we change the problem to multiplication and we take the reciprocal of the second fraction. So the second fraction gets flipped, so to speak, and the first fraction stays the same. Okay, so now I start to see what could be reduced. So I'm looking for common factors. Like, for instance, I could see that both of these could be divided by 10. So I'm going to divide those by 10. I'll get 1. 25. Okay, let's see. Are there any other factors? Certainly. It looks like I could divide these two. I could divide them both by 3. So 18 divided by 3 is 6. 12 divided by 3 is 4. Alright, can I reduce some more? I sure can. It looks like the 6 and 4 could be reduced some more. I could divide that by 2. I could divide that by 2. So let's see, I divide that by 2, I get 3. Divide that by 2, I get 2. All right, so when you finally have reduced as much as you possibly can by dividing by the common factors in the numerator and denominator, you then multiply numerator times numerator, denominator times denominator. In other words, multiply across. So I get 3, because it's 3 times 1 is 3, and then 25 times 2 is 50. So I get 3. Fiftieths is the final answer. Okay, so make sure you go back to mathguide.com. Check out our other uh, videos. Check out our interactive quizzes and lessons. Take care.